With so many software-defined radios available in the market today, it becomes really difficult to decide which software-defined radio is right for your particular project. Sometimes you want to receive. Other times you just need additional filtering or transmit capability. Maybe you need to do some wideband receive work or perhaps you need to go full duplex. And let's not forget that software-defined radio is inherently dependent on software. So sometimes you just need an SDR that has software support for something you want to do. Today I'll go over the various SDRs I own and help you pick the right one for what you want to do. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Signals Everywhere. Here you can see I have a wide assortment of software-defined radios. Let's first assume you're looking for something with a good receiver and don't necessarily need to transmit. If you're looking for a solid budget SDR that performs well, I'd have to recommend the RTL SDR V3 from the RTL-SDR.com blog. It has a software switchable BIAS-T which is perfect for powering an LNA or something else via your antenna feed line, as well as a TCXO or temperature compensated oscillator which helps ensure that the signal you receive does not drift unlike a lot of the cheap eBay units. The unit can receive um, HF all the way up to about 1.7 gigahertz um, in a range of 2.8 to 3.2 megahertz of bandwidth, which is great for your just general purpose reception of aircraft traffic, um, satellite, and many other things uh, that happen to fall within that range. Next we have the new Elec Nestr Smart. This comes in two variants, the Smart and Smart T. The Nestr Smart would be a typical RTL SDR without a bias T, and the Smart T has an always on bias T that you cannot turn off. The nice thing with this particular model is that the form factor was made specifically so you can stack it alongside other SDRs in a USB hub, or in many cases you can stack this side by side where space is very tight in the case of say a Raspberry Pi. So these end up being very useful for situations where you need say multiple SDRs for tracking a P25 system or something else of that nature. Perhaps you're working in a highly noisy RF environment. For that I might recommend an AirSpy Mini. This particular unit has about 6 MHz of available bandwidth as well as tracking filters which help reduce that interference on your received signal. You may also be interested in the AirSpy R2, the big brother to the Mini, which also has these tracking filters in addition to a MCX connector on one side which allows for an external clock input to increase frequency stability and reduce drift. The AirSpy series also includes a software switchable bias T which uniquely can be turned on and off within the SDR Sharp software directly. Here you can see a video from a previous recording using Tempest SDR which is used to intercept unintended radiation from computer monitors so that you can display them remotely using a software defined radio. I found that out of all the software defined radios that I owned, the AirSpy had the best sensitivity for this particular task. Sometimes you just don't have a lot of room. For that, I'd recommend New Elix Nano 3. It's a very small form factor RTL based SDR. No fancy bells and whistles on this one, just a small SDR that gets the job done. Keeping in mind, this gets extremely hot, and I would not touch it while it is in use. Uh, it also comes with an MCX connector for your antenna and an SMA adapter for it. Keeping in mind, once you put that adapter in there, you're probably never getting it back out. Perhaps you're in the unique position where you need to monitor two radio bands that are on vastly different sides of the radio spectrum. For that, I may recommend SDR Play's very unique RSP Duo software defined radio. This has both a reference input and output, so that way you can share that external clock with multiple radio devices, as well as a dual tuner input. We actually have two tuners here. Uh, on tuner 1, we have a high impedance input, which is great for HF, uh, shortwave, and long wire connections. That tuner also has a 50 ohm input, which is fantastic for a traditional antenna. And on tuner 2, we have another 50 ohm input with a software selectable BIAS-T for powering an LNA or other device. And like with any software-defined radio, the software is what really determines what you can do with it. The SDR Uno software that comes with the RSP Duo has some of the best scanning functionality I've ever seen, and of course this amazing dual tuner functionality. You have a 10 MHz of available bandwidth using single tuner mode, and in dual tuner mode you get 2 MHz of bandwidth per tuner. 
And now for something exceptionally interesting. This is the Kerberos SDR. This is a four coherent software defined radio. Essentially, this contains four RTL SDR V3s within one radio. This particular unit has all of the clocks synced together coherently, so you can use this for radio direction finding, uh, passive radar, as well as using all of these SDRs independently for various tasks. Now that we've had a chance to talk about receive capable software defined radio, let's look at those that are capable of transmit. The first on my list here is the Hack RF. This is a half duplex software defined radio. Mine in particular has the Porta Pack installed, but yours traditionally will not have that LCD. We have a clock input and output similar to the RSP Duo. And the nice thing with the Hack RF is that while it is half duplex, meaning it can only transmit or receive, it can't do both at the same time, it is extremely wide band. You can look at 20 megahertz of bandwidth at once, or you can go from DC all the way up to 6 gigahertz, and using the Spectrum Analyzer software within Windows, you can look at that full range at the same time. And once you get into Linux, it really shines. Now perhaps you need something full duplex, something that can receive and transmit at the same time. For this, I highly recommend the Atom Pluto. It has that capability of full duplex, and with a slight modification, you can even add an external clock input to the device. With full duplex capability, you can very easily receive and transmit at the same time. Here you can see I'm doing some packet work where I'm communicating back and forth between multiple Pluto SDR stations using some packet software and the Pluto SDRs in full duplex mode. And while there's a lot more you can do with these, there's also support for DVBS transmission within Windows, among many other things, and the possibilities really open up once you get into the use of this device under Linux. And speaking of devices that work great under Linux and have DVBS um, transmission support, we have the Lime SDR. This is also a full duplex software defined radio. And while there is limited support under Windows for anything short of uh, basic transmit, receive, and DVBS transmission, under Linux, you can even do some amazing things like running OpenBTS, which actually allows you to set up your own GSM base station for testing purposes. So it's a very well rounded and capable software defined radio perfect for those who really want to dig down deep and do some experimentation. And with all that being said, I hope you all found this to be very helpful and informative. Take a look in the links below uh, in the description. We're going to have links back to a uh, SDR comparison chart on our website, as well as some other details to help you get moving forward with software defined radio. Leave me comments below with any questions or suggestions you may have. I'll be more than happy to answer those. And of course, this video would not be possible without our amazing patrons. So I want to give a big shout out to all my patron supporters because without you guys, I really wouldn't be here doing this uh, week after week. It really means a lot to me, and I hope to see you all in the next one.